We did a two-day battery test between the all-new Surface Laptop 7 and the 2024 MacBook Pro, where we tested everything from web browsing and productivity to video calls and gaming to see if the efficiency of the new Snapdragon X chips live up to the hype. Taking a look at the spec sheet, both of these laptops come in at $2,000 in the way we have them configured, where on the Surface, you get the top of the line Snapdragon X Elite chip compared to the Max M3 Pro. The MacBook has the advantage of a 30% larger battery, despite the fact that these laptops share roughly the same footprint, plus a mini LED display, which might help make it a little bit more efficient when displaying true blacks. The Surface, on the other hand, has a slightly smaller screen size while pushing 40% fewer pixels. But you know, at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to those chipsets. Is the new era of Windows laptops finally here? Or will the MacBook remain in a league of its own? All right, so in this first test, we have each laptop cycling through the same set of websites every 30 seconds. We're using Chrome on both laptops. We have these screens calibrated to 200 nits of brightness, and we're not just loading the websites here, but we're also scrolling through them, which I think helps ensure that we're realistically taxing those chipsets. Where after two hours of doing so, there is a major difference. The surface drops by a whopping 24 percentage points, that's nearly a fourth of its capacity, while the MacBook only drops by 16. But it's this next test that I'm actually more excited about, where we try to simulate a productivity workflow, where just like you might in real life, we have both laptops playing music on Spotify, with of course the speakers calibrated to the same level, while each laptop is working in Excel and Word. This isn't necessarily the most processor intensive task in the world, like we're just copying data from Excel, pasting it in Word, and then typing on every letter on the keyboard, but there are four apps open at this point point if you count Chrome, with us actively using three of them, where after two hours of doing this in a loop, this time the Surface does better, dropping by 21 points compared to the MacBook's 25 point drop. Now in this next test, each laptop is going on a 30 minute Zoom call. We actually have this cutout of me moving around on a robot to simulate a real call as best as we could with active blurring and tracking on both cameras. They both have the same 1080p resolution, so one shouldn't be working harder than the other, but nonetheless, after half an hour, the laptops performed identically, with each of them dropping by only six points. In terms of efficiency though, the Surface seems to have used less juice to complete the task given its smaller battery. But the big question, at least for me, is how the Surface is going to handle this standby test, which is arguably more important than the other tests since your laptop spends more time in standby than it does doing anything else, at least if you don't shut your computer down, where after 16 hours, hours, both laptops did well. The MacBook did do a little bit better though, only losing two percentage points, while the Surface lost double that, dropping by four points. So we'll see if the Surface can make up some ground here in the video streaming test, where each device is playing the same movie. Now, one thing I wanted to mention earlier during the productivity test where we were playing music in the background, and I might as well mention here since we're also playing audio in this movie, is while we calibrated the speakers to the same volume, there's no way to calibrate the speaker quality, where with its six different speakers, the MacBook just provides a richer and fuller sound compared to the Surface. And you know, while that's usually a good thing, in the context of a battery test, it might actually hurt the MacBook since technically it's playing a wider range of frequencies. And two hours into the movie, that might have played a role, with the Surface doing better, cutting the MacBook's lead back down to four. Meaning, heading into the last test here in gaming, it is surprisingly close. Now, I didn't really want to do gaming for this test since we had an awesome Premiere Pro test slated, but at the time of testing, Premiere Pro wasn't available on the Surface, which is something that early adopters of these new ARM-based Windows computers should keep in mind. But while I don't like running benchmarks since we try to do real-world testing whenever we can, this Tomb Raider benchmark is at least running a real game, with the graphic settings being matched on both, like with the resolutions and everything, with our robots simply running the benchmark in a loop until the laptops die. So one thing worth noting 
noting here is despite having the same settings, the MacBook with that M3 Pro chip is getting around two to three times more frames per second than the Surface's Snapdragon X Elite, which while is a good thing for gaming, ends up hurting in the context of a battery test since the MacBook is technically doing more work. And it shows in the battery drain, with it dropping at a significantly faster rate compared to the Surface, allowing the Surface to take its first lead. Now, this continues until roughly 24 minutes into the test, at which point the MacBook does something interesting. It goes from rendering roughly 65 frames per second all the way down to just 7 frames per second, while the Surface is holding steady at roughly 24. This shift is most likely a performance cap on the Mac due to only having 3% battery remaining, and it completely changes the drain rate, with that last 3% allowing the MacBook to go on for another 19 minutes before it finally calls it quits, at which point the Surface has an estimated 5% left to go, which unfortunately doesn't really last all that long either, with it only going on for another 7 minutes before it dies. So there you have it. Technically speaking, the Surface Laptop outlasts the MacBook Pro. Now, obviously, there are a whole lot of caveats to that. For one, seven minutes is well within the margin of error. And two, the MacBook kind of got penalized for offering a better experience in things like screen resolution, in terms of its speakers, and its GPU, where the Surface ended up rendering 46% less frames during that gaming benchmark, which, you know, based on our calculations, if the MacBook would have rendered the same amount of frames, it would have lasted 39 minutes longer. So take that for what it's worth. But one thing that is clear from these results is that the Snapdragon X chip here is a real deal when it comes to efficiency, because if you take into account that the Surface had a significantly smaller battery, it did exceptionally well. So I'm really impressed, and I can't wait to test laptops with bigger batteries to see how they stack up to the Mac. But anyways, that is it for me in this video. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the very next episode.